So since I was like four, like when I could learn how to say things, I've been translating for them. So translating legal documents, visits to get like um, to the Garda so we could get our visas. So my dad could get his stamp four and my mom could get her stamp four. Um, when they were getting their citizenship and their passport, like I was translating for all of it. Doctor's appointment, like anything you can think of. As a four-year-old, five-year-old, I was doing it. Hi everyone, and welcome back to La Sociedad, the podcast series where we share the stories of Hispanic and Latino students in Ireland. My name is Diana Vicesa and I'm your host, and today we have a very special episode <laughs> because I'm interviewing my first Latina friend in Ireland. So it's going to be a really special episode, <laughs> you all. Um, yes, I'm interviewing Helen. She was the first Latina Hi. I met in Ireland. So um, welcome, Helen. Thank you so much for coming to the podcast. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so, I feel so happy to be here, honestly. <laughs> I'm so happy you said yes to this. You guys have no idea how, so difficult, how difficult it was to get Helen to say yes to this. She has a very mm -hmm. busy agenda, so I'm so... Yeah, I played very hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> um, so yeah, we met a month ago because we have a module together at UCC. It's been a month. It's been a month. Um, <laughs> so I know a little bit about your story, Helen, but would you mind introducing yourself to the audience? Absolutely. Okay, so hi, I'm Helen. Um, I'm 19 years old and I'm from Brazil, mm -hmm. specifically Goiânia, Goiás. Um, and I've been living here since I was four years old. Um, way too long. <laughs> I've been living in Cork this entire time, so I haven't actually like moved anywhere else. And yeah, that's like the main, the base of everything. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So as you can already see, this is going to be a really special episode because Helen is the first uh, student or person that I'm interviewing who actually grew up in Ireland. Because most of the people that I have interviewed so far, they came to Ireland for college. So Helen has a really special story and um, I would love for you to share how your family ended up in Ireland. You know, why you decided to come to Ireland as a family. Yeah, I I would love to know that. Um, no, okay. Uh, from from what I know, because my parents obviously it's like all secondhand information. I was four years old when I came here, so for me it was just like oh, a nice little trip. Um, <laughs> but my dad, he's actually he works as a butcher, right? Um, and there's opportunities that come with that. He's been doing it since he was like eighteen, nineteen years old. So he's like very skilled in the the area. Um, and he was offered a place he, either here in Ireland or in Australia. So we had these two options and my dad chose Ireland, um, because I think Australia was taking too long or something. <laughs> so he decided to come to Ireland and he spent, I'm going to say like a year or two here. And then he brought my mom and myself over and we've been living here ever since. Wow. And it's been 15 years already. 15 years. He yeah wow. oh my god wow <laughs> i don't realize that um until you actually say it <laughs> yes it's been a long long time so you did yeah. elementary school here you did high school here and now you're doing yeah. college college yes. yeah i started like the my first school experience properly like not counting kindergarten was here wow. so i learned english like to read and write in english before i could read and write in portuguese wow. um I didn't have any like, I didn't have many Brazilian friends, but I still had a few because in my town there's so many Brazilian kids. Um, and I just remember like my first experience in school was just me talking to my little Brazilian friend because I didn't know English at the time. It was like junior, junior infants. And I was like, can you ask the teacher if we can go to the bathroom? Oh. And then he like lifted his hand and was like, Helen needs to go to the bathroom, please. Wow. And he just translate everything for me until I actually learned how to say it myself. Wow. And, and how long did it take you to learn English? I don't think it took long at all. Um, like by the end of junior infants, start of senior infants, I was already like pretty good at it because um, every show that you'd watch on TV would be in English. And I loved watching TV mm -hmm. when I was younger. Um, and mm -hmm. like all the kids I was talking to, they were all... They all spoke English. 
apart from that one friend, he, like everyone else spoke English. So when you're like surrounded by so many people, you don't have an option. You have to mm -hmm. learn as fast yeah. as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know? we can say that language, you know, was definitely a big challenge for you adapting to the new culture. And, you know, I have so many mm -hmm. questions to ask you because, you know, like, there's so much to unpack in your in your story. Fifteen years is a lot. Um, but could you tell us more about you know what are some other challenges that you and your family experienced that you remember of? Um, oh yeah. Well, I the main thing is like my parents. Both of my parents they work in a very like since it's a it's a factory. It's a meat factory. The entire factory, basically, the area that they work in is all Brazilian people. So they don't have the thing that I did, that I did mm -hmm. where they're surrounded by English-speaking people. They're surrounded by all Brazilians, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and they didn't get mm -hmm. to learn English that much. So they can understand, they can slightly speak, but they're very shy. And they don't have that much knowledge that I would um, in regards to saying things so since I was like four like when I could learn how to say things I've been translating for them so translating legal documents visits to get like um to the Garda so we could get our visas so my dad could get his stamp four and my mom could get her stamp four um when they were getting their citizenship and their passport like I was translating for all of it doctor's appointment like anything you can think of as a four-year-old five-year-old I was doing it um and also my parents missed our family a lot because they're so far away and there's a huge time difference. So I just saw them like saying how much, oh, I wish I could go back to Brazil. I can't wait to go back to Brazil. And it's like, although you're living a happy life here, there's always going to be a place of like that you're going to be missing something because this is not what they consider their home. Mm hmm. Wow. Yes. And do you ever miss home? Like, do you, do you still remember? Because you were four years old, of course. But <laughs> yeah. are, like, were there moments like growing up where you were like, wow, I wish maybe I was in Brazil, you know, like I'm, I wish I was going to high school or elementary school in Brazil. Yeah, that's very, it's a very strange experience because when I was younger, I didn't really have that. For me, Ireland was it. Like, <laughs> I didn't have any experience in Brazil. All I knew was like, oh, my nan, my family's in Brazil, so mm -hmm. um, I'd like to visit them, but it's not something that I like, it's not a passion of mine. But mm -hmm. when I was, I think, 14, I went to Brazil for a year and I studied there. Wow. I did ninth grade there and it was the best year of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, like, it was the best experience I've ever had. and. Yeah. When I came back here, I was like, I wish I was there. Mm -hmm. I cannot understand how people live there and they want to go anywhere else because it's mm -hmm. so beautiful. There's so much to do. It's so sunny. The people are so nice. Mm -hmm. They're so welcoming. Mm -hmm. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, no, and like, I would love to ask this. <laughs> yeah. How often do you compare Brazil and Ireland? How often do you? All the live? time. <laughs> Can you like, tell us, like, what are some of the things that you oh. compare them? Oh my God. Okay. So when, when I came back here, like when I went to study there for a year and I came back here, everything was just in Brazil, it would have been different in Brazil. They would have done this. <laughs> like if I went to a shop now and I was like talking to the sales clerk and I'm like, in Brazil, he would have been a lot nicer. He would have asked about my family. He would have known my grandparents. Um, <laughs> if I'm talking to like a friend or something and I'm like, if this was in Brazil, like we'd be doing so many different things. We'd be, mm -hmm have a different experience we'd be going out in the sun we'd be going to the beach um we'd be talking about crime <laughs> like, there's, just, <laughs> there's just so many different things the food um and the culture the way people there are just excited for everything and here it's like mm, mm. sometimes it depends <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally get that. I mean, even for, for me and for the other students that I have interviewed, you mm -hmm. know, like we compare our country to, you know, like the situation here yeah. that we compare about like safety. Like I'm from South America, so I get what you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's I was insane. telling a friend of mine, I was telling a friend of mine, you know, like I could never walk by myself at 10 p.m. in my country. Like that yeah. would never happen. I would never make it home, you know, but here I feel so safe. Yeah, you know? it's 
like I feel like Ireland has really spoiled me in that aspect because <laughs> when I went to Brazil, I used to take my phone like on the on my back pocket, and my mom was like, "Are you stupid? You <laughs> you can't do that. Like this is Brazil. This is not Ireland. You can't keep carrying. Like you have to put your phone like inside of your pants or something so that nobody steals it. Um, or carry around a Nokia phone. Leave your iPhone at home. What are you doing?" Um, I wasn't allowed to go out unless my mom was with me. The one time I went out by myself in the entire like year of study without my mom and just my friends, it was to go to church. <laughs> wow! Wow! So it was it was a huge difference for for you because like yeah. you grew up here and you always felt so safe, you know, doing and, whatever you wanted. And now you were in this new place that is where you where you were born, but like you don't feel as safe as you feel here exactly so like very interesting it's so it's such a weird feeling and it took me a while to get my head around it because i thought my mom was just being exaggerated but and then when i asked my friends in school and everything and i was like let me go out by myself and everything they were like well i've been robbed at the front of my house so i understand why <laughs> and i was like that's an actual thing oh my god <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I can tell you, yes, it is. <laughs> oh my, please don't say that. I want to go back again. <laughs> like yesterday, I was watching this video and, and I uh, it was a meme. It was like uh, Latinos or like South American people when they move to Spain or to Europe, like for, for I don't know, if they, if they go to Europe for like a week, uh -huh. they see someone in a motorcycle and they just run because they think that they're going to be robbed. <laughs> When you see a, someone in a motorcycle in South America, your heart starts beating. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, don't make eye contact. They won't target me if I don't see it. <laughs> it's insane. Yes, no. It, oh my god, I have this one it is, story it is. that is my my family. Like my mom and I, we lived in an apartment with a balcony, and it was like facing the main street. And in front of us, there was like a. Mm -hmm. um, it's like an empty area where they have shows and everything. But one night I was like sitting on the balcony and I was doing my little homework and I was so happy and everything. And then I saw like a bunch of teenagers, I'd say it was five, and the police cars just start coming. Oh, and wow. the police was like super brutal and then they were like, putting them against the wall and they were like checking the bags. And I could hear the kids screaming, they're like, we didn't do anything, we don't have anything. And the police is like, shut up. And they were like checking everything and I was like, oh my God. What is this? Not even real. Yeah, I'm like, this is not happening. What? <laughs> yeah. So obviously, you know, like safety is a big thing here yeah. in Ireland. Like I feel really safe here. So uh, in addition to that, you know, what else would you say are some of the benefits of living here? Oh my God. I feel like, yeah, obviously safety is a great thing. Um, you can, you can do a lot more without like, I don't know. I feel like there's not half as much worry. People here are just very mellow and chill <laughs> <laughs> all the time, basically. Um, mm -hmm. There are like specific rules for everything. So you know that like you won't be treated unfairly. I people that are, but it's less likely um, to happen if it was in another country. I, I can't like on the spot. It's very difficult to think but I think that's the main thing like the rules and the safety and the relaxation of everybody <laughs> yeah and people are nice you so know like nice. most people are really nice and, and old people like uh I, so nice that's a common like that's one of the common things that came up in all the conversations that I have had so far like everyone is like people yeah. are really nice here like they will help you like if you need help like get into yeah. a certain place they'll help you get there and I'm like the wow. only thing is you know to understand directions is so hard because <laughs> uh. <laughs> like if you're asking oh can I go where where is it to go to this place and they're like right so you go here you go down here you'll see this post and then you'll go to the left and then you'll see the woman and then you'll turn to the right there and then you'll do a little roundabout and I'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> okay and also with the accent yeah. also with the older accent. people especially older people like I just can't, mm -hmm. I've been here for ages and I can't understand what they're saying. I just go, yeah, uh-huh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's exactly what I do. And today, this morning, yeah. we were in class, we were actually talking about Irish <laughs> yeah. accents. And I told you, you have an Irish accent no already. One. You're the yes, you only do. person that ever <laughs> has told me that. Everyone else is like, you sound so American. 
And some people, like, they, they can't place my accent exactly. Some people say I have, like, um, some, like, Australian twang, especially if I'm working. I'm like, oh, thank you very much, like, no worries or whatever. And they're like, that's so Australian. And if I'm talking to anybody, they're like, you sound so American. People at work, they wow. copy my accent. They're like, oh, my God, I'm Helen. And I'm like, I don't sound like that. <laughs> you yeah. don't sound like You're that. You're the only one. I remember. <laughs> No, no, I remember when I yeah. met you. I remember it was the first day of class for what for yeah. our module. And the, the, this is culture <laughs> shock for me. So I come from school in the US, right? And uh, school like uh when 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 you when you have a class, when you have uh-huh. a module uh in, in the school in the US, you don't have it with the same people. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you have it with like random people that you'll never see again after <laughs> yeah. that class, you know what I mean? So when I came here the first day of class like the professor she already knew i was new she was like you're new and i'm like how do you know <laughs> how do you see that we all knew each other already <laughs> we all knew each other already yeah. so when she mentioned that we have to do a when when she mentioned that we have to do a group project um you came late oh, that day i remember um, that <laughs> You were late that day, um, and I asked you, where are you from? And you said, uh, I'm from Brazil, and I was like, can I be in the group with you? <laughs> I remember, and I was like, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> Let's stick together, oh my you God. know? Um, I was so happy to find a Latina in, in my class, you know, because I was like, oh my gosh, it was so difficult for me. I know, it was so difficult for me to find other Latinos or other Hispanic mm-hmm. people at UCC. And uh, this leads me to my next uh-huh. question, you know, how easy, how easy or how difficult has it been for you to find a community of Latino, uh, of mm-hmm. Latino people here in Ireland? It's, that's a very difficult question because since I've been here for so long, I feel like I don't have that much of a connection anymore. Not like I don't have a connection with Irish people nor with Latino people because I'm not like 100% in either of the cultures. So I I have found a bunch of like people from like Latino people that I can like talk to and I'm like, oh my God, we can relate in this aspect. But I know that like I, I can't understand fully what their experience is just as they can't understand what mine is. And it's the same with Irish people. Um, but the closest I've been now is there's this hairstylist in Cork, Miss Bliss, and they're like Brazilian. And whenever I go there, they make me feel so at home and like I'm part of the community. And it's so nice, but it's very hard to find a connection to people sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just I, because I... of that, really. <laughs> Yeah, I get that, and, and 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 you said you know like you're not that much in contact with your uh, with your culture anymore. But are there mm-hmm. some things that still keep you you know like or connected to Brazil? Like maybe food. you mentioned yeah. food, you mentioned the music. Yeah, <laughs> you can't. I can't get over the food. It's so good. <laughs> I miss it so much. Whenever I was in Brazil, like that's all I'd gain, like. 5 kg in one month or something because I'm just eating as much as possible I'm like I'm not going to be wow. able to have this again I'm going to eat <laughs> all of it but here in Ireland we actually mm-hmm. like in Cork we have a a restaurant with Brazilian food and everything and it has like Brazilian alcohol as mm-hmm. well which I've never tried before ah. and there's like little convenience shops that also sell ingredients so we can make stuff at home mm-hmm. Um, and because my parents have been here for so long, they also know like little tips and tricks from like the Polish shop. They'll have this that's useful mm-hmm. to make mm-hmm. some dish. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's really good to hear that there are like stores and restaurants that you can go to, uh, you know, the sort of Brazilian food. Because uh, the yeah. first person that I interviewed for the podcast, she's from Spain and Peru. And she was, you know, talking about yeah. how it was so difficult for her to find Peruvian food in Cork. Um, so yeah. I think it's great that you can mm-hmm. find Brazilian food here. Yeah, I, I'd say that's so lucky because we didn't know about this place until like a year ago. Oh. And now we're, <laughs> we're like, every time we come to Cork, my parents were like, we're going to eat there and we're going to eat the full two course meal <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with dessert, of course. Yeah. That's really lucky for us, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's really, really <laughs> lucky. Like, I wish I could find Paraguayan food here. <laughs> I could never. Yeah, that's, 
Is it is it like in Dublin or anything or what? what I is don't the thing think about so. it. Like, I mean, I don't know. I'm... I want to try so bad. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I want to try too. <laughs> um, yeah, Do you know, would it be hard to make at home? I think it wouldn't. I think I can find ingredients here. Uh, yeah, pretty much corn, okay. corn, a lot of corn. <laughs> Bye, me. Bye, Bye, me. Bye, me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, talking about cork, um, you know, I, I would also love to know why you ch- uh, why you chose UCC, you know, because uh, mm-hmm. of course you've been here for longer, you know more about the different universities all around the country. So what made you choose uh, UCC? <laughs> oh, UCC has my heart, <laughs> but <laughs> I think it's mainly as well, like. I don't know. I feel like this is a very Latino thing, but I'm like this with my family. <laughs> so I don't want to be far away from them, like, if I can choose not to be. Um, so UCC was always going to be my first option. Um, I just wanted to be somewhat close to them. And also, I feel like the other colleges, it'd just be so hard to start and meet new people and half of my friends were coming here Mm -hmm. it just felt like the easiest option Mm -hmm. and it's the only college that has the course that I like (laughs) oh yes tell the people tell the audience what you're studying at UCC (laughs) psychology and computing yes (laughs) (laughs) do you want to talk about your research methods uh mojo Nobody Girl. likes that module for some no. reason. <laughs> Please. I thought I was going to be so into psychology, but I prefer so much more the computing aspect of it or like the the in between. Mm-hmm. Nobody likes research methods. <laughs> Nobody likes research <laughs> yeah. um, From being in our course now for like a month, as you said, because I didn't even realize it was a month, but you can already tell. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Everyone has already told me how much they, they dislike <laughs> research methods. <laughs> Yeah, it's a common theme amongst yes. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, obviously you have been able to find your community at UCC. Like you're really good friends with a lot of people in, in oh, our yeah. module, for example. Like we were talking about mm-hmm. that today, um, how you all know each other, you all like each other, like you hang out, and that's amazing. That's so cool. <laughs> that was like yeah. a huge culture shock for me. <laughs> really? Yes. I feel like well. In our course, it's it's kind of different from a lot of courses because we have like 22 people, maybe, mm-hmm. like total. And we've been together since like first year. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas in another course, they'd have like 50, 90, 100. So we, we have that like, we're so small, we have to connect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and everybody that does the course kind of has the same personality. Not the same personality, but like similar. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like that's a bit easier to make friends and also you <laughs> now you're part of the group now you're part should of the I gang stay? should i stay for one yes. more semester yes please <laughs> everybody tell her to stay <laughs> i would love to oh, i love you CC, i'd love so to have much. you so we can so we can uh sing together during lab <laughs> what is it the voice it's of the the <laughs> Beautiful times. I'm genuinely going to miss that. Ah, uh, yes. Me too. Me too. Um, so moving on <laughs> to another topic. Um, oh, yeah. But before, <laughs> but before that, if anyone is listening to this and they are thinking about studying at UCC, you need to study com- uh, psychology and computing. It's the best course. And you can get really good jobs after graduation. Yes. <laughs> you can. You can get so really many opportunities. So many opportunities. Also, thank you for the <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for the representation there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, of course, you are. You know, like uh, we. I can already feel that you're loving this experience. Um, but you know, I can't help but ask. You know, uh, in these fifteen years that you've been here, have you experienced you know any difficult situations or misunderstandings with Irish people? Um. I feel I feel very scared. I know there's not like a huge amount of racism in Ireland. Like I feel like they're pretty good with it compared to a bunch of other countries. But I'm still very scared of that <laughs> for some reason. Just because I feel like they're gonna think I'm too loud or they're gonna think I'm too too hyper or like they're gonna associate me with a stereotype. My mom told me once that she was like Oh yeah, apparently Brazilian women are stereotyped as like sluts here, and I'm like, 
So now that's what people think of me without no even knowing me. And I hate that. Like, I don't want to have a ne negative stereotype associated when nobody even knows us. So, like, from every single Latina person, like, Latina girl and guy that I've met, it's just, they're so nice and angels. Like, you can't make that assumption without knowing someone. I am glad that you brought that up because when I moved here, you know, I, I come from... You know, I, I've been studying in the U.S. and of course there's a lot of discrimination there. I haven't really faced discrimination mm -hmm. here, racism here. But I have heard a lot of students, Latino and Hispanic students say, you know, like people, you know, in general, you know, they have this idea of Latina women being this way. And that is so frustrating. I remember like being just so frustrated the first time I heard that. I was like, oh my God, you know, like they have, you know, like there's the stereotype of Latina women just, you know, being this way and, mm -hmm. and people thinking that we are that way. And as you said, you know, like our community, you know, everyone is just so nice. You know, everyone yeah. is just, you know, we don't deserve to, 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 to be, you know, like, to have that as well. type of stereotype or yeah. whatever. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> and as well, I think like, because they, they have these ideas, they think everybody's going to fall into this box. And when I was at a club mm -hmm. someday, like, a bunch of guys, if I went to tell them, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm Brazilian. And they're like, ooh, so... And they suddenly assume certain things about me, like, I'm going to go home with them, or I'm going to be like this, or I'm going to be like that. Like, mm -hmm. you can't do that. That is so disrespectful. Yeah, so I asked this to, to other students in the podcast as well. What would you want Irish people or people in general to understand about your culture or your country or, you know, like your community? Mm-hmm. I'd say it's just that, like, although we're all a community, we're all individual people, everybody has their own little interests, everybody has their own, like, things that they like to do, things that they don't like, um, and we're all <laughs> pretty friendly, so just don't make assumptions and try to to understand where people are coming from. Like, not everybody has the same experience that you would. Not everybody has my experience, not everybody has your experience. So, just like, <laughs> be nice, be understanding, be interested, try to take an interest in other people's lives, because mm -hmm. that will teach you so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. You couldn't have said that better. That was, that's why I love you, Helen. Oh. <laughs> that's why you're the best, the queen. I adore you so much. Um, and, oh. I don't know. I have so many more questions, but you know, I know you have a, a super busy agenda. Um, so I would like mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, totally. wrap this up <laughs> um, <laughs> by asking you, you know, could you give a message to, you know, the Latino and the Hispanic community in Ireland or, you know, to any student who is thinking about studying abroad in Ireland? Could you give them a message? Yeah, absolutely. I'd say for the for anyone that's planning to come here, like definitely do because obviously you won't have my dear here, <laughs> sadly. But there's gonna be so many nice people and it's such a nice experience. You learn so much, you get to do so much. Um and I feel like just having just being here kinda teaches you a lot about yourself, what you appreciate, what type of person you are. And for all the Latinos that are already here, come to me. <laughs> I want to meet you guys. Um, yeah, the, like I just absolutely love everybody that I've met so far. And I think it's so nice that there's a proper community building and everyone's gathering together a bit more. It's lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. You're part of the Hispanic Society, the Latino Hispanic Society? No. I didn't even know it was there until you said it to me. <laughs> yeah, you should join. They have really cool activities. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll share oh that info gosh. with you after this. Um, Please do. Just after this, just text me everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, is there anything else you would like to share with the audience? <laughs> Kisses from Brazil. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's that's it really. Um I'd say that my experience here in Ireland has been fun. It's been very, it hasn't been very hard, but it's been very complicated trying to understand the two sides of myself, the side that like has grown up here and the side that like 
I am Brazilian. I am part of this whole different culture and world and everything. Um, but I'm still learning and it's working out so far. It's lovely. It's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if anyone is the same, obviously, you know, there's no pressure to try to understand everything straight away. We're learning as we go and we still have so much time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a beautiful message. Thank you so much, Helen. Aww. You're the best. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I love you. You look beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Very different <laughs> from this morning. You look so good. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look... I swear to God, every day. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, everyone, that was Helen. Yay. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much, Helen, for, for coming to the podcast. And Thank you very much, sharing Diana. Sharing your story. You know, it was amazing. Um... I just had so much fun interviewing you. <laughs> and we need to end this episode with our song. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for the little yes, dance? Yes, yes. <laughs> the voice of liar. The voice of liar. The voice of liar. Liar. <laughs> liar. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we were doing like this in class as well. <laughs> Thank yes, you very yes. much. It was lovely <laughs> being here. Thank you for inviting me as well. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you in the next episode of La Sociedad. Bye. Bye. Keep up. <laughs>